Well, what a privilege for me to get to welcome uh, the Prime Minister of Australia, Scott Morrison. Uh, he's been a great friend of our country for a long time. Uh, real honor to have him here today in a number of meetings, and certainly uh, I'm pleased that this could be one of them. Prime Minister. Thank you. Well, Senator Blunt, uh, Representative Joe Courtney, friends of Australia, so many who are here today. It's, it's wonderful to be in your nation's capital. It's wonderful to be here on Capitol Hill. Uh, this is a hill from which democracy um, shouts to the world in a good way, and in a positive way. And the friendship between Australia and the United States is one that runs deep. It has a, it has a long history and it has a bright future as we've been remarking upon as we've come to this time when we're uh, acknowledging, celebrating 70 years of the ANZUS Alliance. When I think about the Australia-US Alliance, there are many stories and the, the friends of Australia who are here uh, have probably heard them all before, but I, I suspect you don't tire in hearing them. And they often go to the more than 100 years of mateship that we've had in serving together in so many theatres all around the world, where we have developed a trust and a friendship, where we can depend on each other, where we have each other's back. I like to say we look to the United States, but we never leave it to the United States. Um, we both carry uh, our share of the responsibility of the relationship. And it's a relationship we constantly replenish, uh, particularly through the work of the Friends of Australia who have gathered here today and who serve this great nation in the Congress and in the Senate. But one of my most um, important stories that informs me about this relationship is a story about a soldier in, back in 1943. Uh, his name was Les Bull Allen, and he was from Victoria. He had served throughout the Second World War since the early 40s. He'd served over in the uh, other theatres, but had returned to Australia and went up to serve in New Guinea. And he was on a place called Mount Tambu. Now, I've, I've been to Mount Tambu in Papua New Guinea. Some years ago, I walked what was called the Black Cat Track. And that was where some of the fiercest fighting the year after Kokoda. It was like the sequel to the Kokoda campaign. But the difference about this campaign that we were fighting it with the Americans. And the commander of the American forces was Archie Brucevil. And on this one day, when the battle was most fierce on Mount Tambu, Les Bull Allen, who was a stretcher, and this is a very steep mountain, and you can imagine what was happening on that day. And on that day, Les Bull Allen carried 12 American soldiers to safety. He was awarded the US Silver Star. And to me, that always sort of says of the care. I mean, this was a, an act of, of caring for their, their fellow con, um, soldiers in the field and bringing people to safety. This wasn't advancing on a line. This was when our mates had fallen. Les Ball Allen stood tall and stood with our American friends and, and carried them to safety. He was a big fella, he had to be, it was a big hill. And the American soldiers weren't small either. <laughs> and he, I, was, I was flat out walking up this hill. The idea that he was able to carry 12 soldiers to safety on that day is quite remarkable. But I think what it shows is this is what we do for each other. And we do it instinctively between Australia and the United States. <clears throat> we do it uh, so naturally. And you ask yourself, well, what, what enables two countries to have such an instinctive relationship. And I think it all comes back to the beliefs we share and the values that we hold. We're different countries. We have, you have a presidential system, we have a, a Westminster system. We sometimes call it the Washminster system. Uh, there, are, there are similarities, but there are differences. But the goals and the beliefs and the values that we share are, are innate to us both. And so the connection is just so easy. We finish each other's sentences and we form new partnerships and we allow our partnerships to evolve. Uh, as we've come now to this 70th anniversary of ANZUS, in this same month we embark on a new chapter with AUKUS, a partnership which will be drawing on um, not just um, the defensive strengths that we each have, but 
uh, the technological know-how of our supply chains, our best scientists, our, our, our best industrialists and entrepreneurs, and how we can work together to secure a, a free and open Indo-Pacific. I remarked earlier to the, uh, to the, the House leadership um, combined that I paraphrased Benjamin Franklin with the G7, and I was talking about the world order that the United States in particular has been able to establish, a liberal world order, a world order that favours freedom, but remarked that this was not something that we could ever take for granted, and we must always work earnestly to ensure that we maintain it. And so to paraphrase Benjamin Franklin, a world order uh, that favours freedom, if we can keep it, if we can keep it. And that is our shared task, I think, in this relationship. They are the things that I think bind us so tightly. That is, the, that is what we want, a world order that favours freedom. Whether it be in the Indo-Pacific, where, where we fought at Hamel all those years ago, um, when we won a battle together on American Independence Day together. And from that day on, we've been doing it ever since. And so today it is great to join you all, particularly to honour one of, one of your finest. I want to thank all the members of the Friends of the Australia Caucus, but I want to pay a special tribute to Caucus Co-Chairs Senator Blunt and Dick Durbin and Representative Joe Courtney and Mike Gallagher and appreciate uh, what you have done respectively, especially at the moment, introducing resolutions into each chamber of Congress, commemorating the breadth of our immensely valued relationship. You always get a sense here, when you, as, an, as an Australian in the United States, that you're very, very welcome. Uh, Americans know how to welcome people and make you feel at home. And every time I have come here, I've always felt that way. Um, I am course delighted, though, to present today one of Australia's highest civilian honours to Senator Blunt for his many years of service to advance our shared interests. Senator Blunt is being appointed as an officer of the Order of Australia, joining a small number of non-Australians to receive this award. This is not something that we do commonly, but it is done where we believe someone has shown the type of affinity, affection, and demonstrated the values and beliefs that we share as two countries, and has enabled that to be forged in the partnership that we have. Uh, Roy, you've yes. done a tremendous job in refreshing this relationship, in, in the innovations of this relationship, warming the fires of this relationship. And we are deeply grateful for that. Uh, so that when we seek to go in new paths uh, and, and even stronger paths in our alliance, we know we can do that because of the, the great many friends that we have here in, on this capital and that we can advance those with great confidence. So I want to thank you for that. Uh, in so many ways, the work you've done as part of this great fellowship that you've established here and, and, and driven for some time. AUKUS is made possible because we know that that exists and that enables us to go forward. So with that, um, Ambassador, um, can I thank everyone who's here to celebrate this moment. Uh, may God bless you and these great United States of America and Australia. And uh, it's, it's great to be here to have this opportunity to make this presentation. I'll pass it over to the Ambassador. Dr. Clare? Yep. Thank you, Prime Minister. Um, ambassadors are a bit like ship's captains. There are certain functions they can undertake. Now, ship's captains can marry people at sea. You can sometimes get married on embassy grounds. But today, one of the pleasures I've got in this role is on behalf of our Governor General to preside over this honour, this great honour. If there's one thing I want to take credit for in my time here, it's that uh, I nominated Roy for this honour. And the reason I did this is when I got to Washington. The way he embraced me and Abby, embraced, particularly Abby, that was nice. <laughs> <laughs> the way that we were embraced by you um, was not just because of us as individuals, it's because of your great love and friendship for Australia. And then I started to look into the record and to see that, you know, this is a consistent record of friendship going back many years. There are many Australian ambassadors who benefited from your advice and counsel. And you've been instrumental, particularly with the Free Trade Agreement, in wrangling the votes. 
And in our system, but I was a former colleague of the Prime Ministers in the Parliament, we respect people who can get votes. <laughs> it's very important. So you've been a great friend of Australia. It's a privilege to be with you, to have your friendship. And I would now like to call upon Major General Freeman to read the citation, after which we will decorate you. Thank you, Ambassador. Ambassador, I present to you Senator Roy Blunt. Senator Blunt has been appointed as an honorary officer of the Order of Australia for Distinguished Service to Australia's bilateral relationship with the United States of America. A long-term advocate of Australia in the United States Congress, Senator Blunt has demonstrated unwavering support for Australian-United States bilateral relations, seeking to broaden, deepen and modernise the alliance. Senator Blunt has been a confidant to Australian ambassadors in the United States and has been graciously hosted senior visitors. As Republican Whip in the House of Representatives from 2003 to 2009, he helped secure passage of the United States and Australia Free Trade Agreement, now celebrating its 15th year. The Australian-United States Free Trade Agreement has made Australia's economic ties with the United States more important and widespread than any other nation. This work resulted in a unique new visa, the E3 visa, that has enabled highly skilled Australians to enter and work in the United States of America. Moreover, his steadfast leadership and as a founding member and co-chair of the Bipartisan's Friends of Australian Caucus, which has developed into a central tool for Australia's liaison with the US Congress. For years, he has hosted Australian University interns in his office as a means of strengthening our institutional ties. Senator Blunt's dedication and support for Australia and its interests included spearheading a powerfully symbolic Senate resolution that commemorated the centenary of mateship, a hundred years of Australians and Americans fighting as allies in every major conflict since the First World War. Outside of government, his eager participation in the Australian-American Leadership Dialogue has provided unique insights on American politics to Australian stakeholders and political leaders. Senator Blunt's distinguished efforts in advocating for the Australian-United States bilateral relationship is commendable and worthy of formal national recognition as an honorary officer of the Order of Australia. Thank you. wonderful to have you here. Um, when the uh, embassy reached out about three weeks ago to ask if I would be able to accept this award, I checked with the Ethics Committee and uh, they said I would be and then I checked with Abby and she said well only if we can go receive it in person in Australia and have another trip to Australia. And so that was going to be a condition but uh, the ambassador outdid himself, Prime Minister, when he figured out how to do this uh, when you were here and for you to be part of it and uh, I'm deeply appreciative of that. I would say when uh, Ambassador Thali and I began to work together uh, on the Australia Free Trade Agreement about 17 years ago now, um, I didn't know exactly where that would lead, but uh, that, that effort uh, was such an important effort for both of our countries. You'd think an Australia-US uh, trade agreement would be easy to achieve, but as it turns out, no trade agreement is easy to achieve. Uh, and so a lot of work went behind that and we developed a close friendship and then Ambassador Thalley handed me off to the next ambassador and that worked right up uh, through uh, Arthur and Elizabeth and so pleased that they're here representing your country in the way they are. Uh, and as you mentioned, Prime Minister, what an important time to be thinking about this relationship. Uh, the 100 year celebration of our efforts together in World War I, you know, the only time uh, the American troops have ever fought under command of a non-American uh, was their willingness and eagerness to fight under uh, 
under the Australian General Monash in World War I. Uh, and that 100-year celebration of that event really led uh, Ambassador Hockey to say, you know, we should use this year uh, to establish a Friends of Australia group. And uh, Senator Durbin and I did that on this side of the building, and our friends on the other side of the building uh, moved forward in the same way. And then, of course, the 70th anniversary of ANZUS, and uh, now uh, an, an announcement uh, that was made just last week. We had, had a breakfast meeting with the Secretary of uh, Defense and uh, your, the Foreign Minister from Australia, and they said, we're going to make a big announcement in a day or two, and every senator there said, you probably shouldn't tell us because we might, not be, I mean, we might not be all that trustworthy in holding on to a big announcement. But the announcement really was a big announcement. Seldom do you get the heads up that there's going to be a big announcement, and it turns out to be an announcement of that magnitude that uh, sharing our defense capacity, sharing technology with each other in ways we haven't before. For decades, we've shared intelligence. You know, the, the five eyes, the five, the four other countries that we have a very, very open relationship with in our intelligence world, and none of those partners is a stronger partner uh, than than Australia. Uh, but uh, such a, a labor of love for us. It's easy to be friends with people who want to be friends, uh, and our shared values, uh, our shared sense of adventure. Everybody that came to this country and everybody that came uh, to Australia originally came uh, with an adventurous spirit. I think that's why we so admire our friendship with uh, Australians. Uh, it makes it easy for us. It's easy to welcome new ambassadors when they come, and uh, they have so often become uh, very close friends of uh, both of ours, them, them and their families as well have several members here who uh, the last time we were able to go to Australia for the bilateral uh, were able to be with us, Senator Wicker and uh, Senator Stabenow, and I think maybe Congressman Cole might be here, and Congressman uh, uh, see, Jason went as well, and uh, Joe was there, Joe Courtney was there, and, and I didn't realize Joe had come in yet, but uh, this is a room full of friends, and they're friends of mine, but uh, I think more importantly, uh, Prime Minister, they're friends of yours and friends of Australia, and uh, what, a, what a great honor uh, to uh, have this important addition to wonderful relationship for 20 years now I've had with uh, Australians, including the Prime Ministers. There was a kind of a dicey period three or four years ago that I couldn't really keep track of who was the Prime Minister. <laughs> so occasionally I would call Ambassador Beasley just to say, just call to check and see who's the ambassador today. <laughs> He always uh, took that in a good humored way. So great to be here. Tom Cole just walked in, who was with us in Australia the last time uh, we were there. But uh, glad to be here with you. And uh, I'm sure if I'm concluding uh, the event here today, I think I am. And the conclusion of the event would be uh, Prime Minister, would love to have a few minutes with all of us. Uh, Abby and I would too. We're glad you're here. Thanks for taking the time.